I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Latin America. Today, we're going to be starting a series on building up the skills and knowledge and tools that you need to become an expat successfully. Because lots of people become expats, and they may stumble and run into some problems, and there's a lot of people who attempt to do it and end up ultimately failing, meaning that they move back and give up on their expat dreams. We don't want that to happen to you. We want you to be successful and find your happy place, find your paradise, and move on to the next chapter of your life in a wonderful, happy way that makes you thrilled with the entire process. So we're gonna work on putting together those tools for you for free. We're never gonna ask you for money. I mean, we'd love donations, but we're never gonna ask you to pay for anything. And that's why we're putting this into this channel, into this format, and we're kicking that off today, right after that bump. Our starter skill today may seem really obvious, but it would be amazing for a lot of you to realize just how many people start to go down the, or even completely go down the process of becoming an expat and immigrant moving abroad and never actually stop and think about this. And if you ask them, they may not know. And that is, you need to define your why. Exactly why are you thinking about becoming an expat? What is motivating you? There's lots of reasons that people become expats. Becoming an expat, while it tends to be trendy, it's certainly a current thing on YouTube and similar social media where people are talking about it and it's come into the social consciousness in a way that it never did before and we've started applying words like expat to the whole process to make it sound a lot cooler than it ever was before. The reality is, is that becoming an expat or an immigrant, they're not exactly the same thing, but there's an awful lot of overlap, has been something that people have been doing for time immemorial. This is not something special. It's not new. It's not modern or anything of the sort. People have always been migratory, and there's always been people who started in one part of the world and ended up in another because of one reason or another over time. Maybe they met a special someone and they wanted to move where that person was from. Maybe they had a job opportunity or a career opportunity, or they were displaced by war or famine or any number of things. This is a normal part of the human experience and a very general part of it. But for a lot of you who are now considering the possibility of moving to a new country, permanently, temporarily, maybe you want to be a digital nomad, but you're looking at no longer being located in or based out of the country of your origin, you may need to stop for a moment and define exactly what it is you want to do. We want to define our goals in this process. And this is should be pretty simple, but take a moment for sure. Sit down and ask yourself, what are the things that could easily be multiple things that are making you consider becoming an expat? And if you're just kicking around the idea, then maybe some of the things we're going to discuss will resonate with you. And maybe you should consider whether they make sense for you. But becoming an expat, leaving your home country is a big decision, of course. And it's one that probably has a lot of moving pieces. It's going to be very rare. Very few people are going to sit down and say, you know what? I really like the weather in this other place. So I'm going to uproot my entire life and move to a new location because I want to change the weather. Now, if you're Canadian, I understand that that may completely make sense. And that may be an exception to this rule. But for most people from most countries, the weather is not so dramatically better, someplace different than the place that you live, that you would change things like your place of residency, your tax status, your entire life and the people that you can easily interact with and the places that you can travel from or to all those things change. Like, you really do shuffle your life and kind of start over in a lot of ways when you relocate to a new location. And that can be a great thing. That alone could be a reason for looking at expatting. So let's talk about a couple of those things you may be putting on your list and you likely are going to have at least one or two that I'm not going to think of at all. The average person is probably going to have a few items that are completely unique to them, but there's going to be a lot of common ones that you're likely to share. And there may be ones that you hadn't thought of or weren't really contemplating that you may want to put on the list and say, well, this isn't my trigger. This isn't the thing that's causing me to become an expat. But now that I think about it, it's something that is important to me and I want to include in my planning for becoming an expat. So let's get down to some ideas of why you may be considering expatry. With everything that's going on in the world right now, a lot of people are suddenly looking at becoming expats because they are perceiving true or not, problems in their countries of origin. It could be political problems, economic problems, future growth, or just opportunities for their children. But in one way or another, the place where they currently live and reside and are domiciled and, and residents 
may not be providing the future or don't, does not seem to be providing the future that they're hoping for, for themselves or their children. And so we refer to this as the push pressure. You're being pushed away from your point of origin rather than being pulled towards something externally. And this is unfortunate, but it is a common point of pressure. A lot of people of course, are becoming expats all around the world, basically within a refugee status or a uh, economic migrant status because they are seeing either a lack of opportunities or a, a real danger, maybe per even persecution or famine or war in their home country, and they need to get out. And all these are very negative things, and we wish that no one had to move for these reasons. These are push reasons or negative reasons, right? I need to leave a place and so I'm not going to another place necessarily because I love that place I'm going to. I'm doing it because I'm scared of or in danger in the place that I'm coming from. And so that is a factor. Now, a lot of people are simply perceiving persecution, perceiving a lack of opportunity, and those are negatives. That is still a push factor, but they're not the same as being a refugee uh, or an asylum seeker or something like that. But those all fall into that one category. And it is worth noting, you know, lots of people who decide to make the jump often do so because they have some amount of push pressure, meaning there's some possibly very small, but degree of not being completely satisfied with the place they're coming from. And there's lots of very mundane reasons why this may be. You may not like the weather, you may not like the food, you may not like the uh, taxes, you may not like the job prospects, you may not like the current state of politics, any number of things. And, and it may not be that you hate them, it may not be that they're so big of a deal that you would make decisions based on that, but they're significant enough that at least you take note and say, well, these are things I could improve in my life, and so they become part of a push pressure. Lots of people have this push pressure. It's important to note that it may be something that exists for you and, and enumerate it, but it's also important, we have videos on this, that you don't want to, unless absolutely necessary, be driven by this. You want to find things that are going to make you happy. You want to find a, a perfect situation or what we say in my industry, you want to uh, define what good looks like and work towards that. You're deciding that the place that you're in, in this situation is bad and, and you want to leave. Yes, we can, we can establish, we want to improve our lives, but we don't want to just incrementally improve. We don't want to say this is bad, this is better, so we're going to do that. We want to say this is not adequate for us for whatever reason. We don't want to dwell on the negatives. Let's, you know, focus on the positives of life. We're going to find ways to improve. I mean, everyone who's expatting, right, is doing so to improve their life for some reason, right? Something is getting so much better that you're willing to change countries. So we're always have this positive to focus on. Let's focus on that. We may, we can't completely ignore the negative, but let's focus on not getting away from the bad, let's define what good looks like and work on getting you there. Now, the number of reasons or pull factors that you may be going to a new country are essentially unlimited. Of course, there's the obvious things like we mentioned, weather or different selection of food. A lot of people would seriously consider moving to Thailand because it's just delicious all the time. That's an important thing to understand that maybe that's a factor for you and that's why you may choose a specific country or choose to become an expat in the in the general sense. Uh, but for a lot of people, you're going to have a blend of things. For my family, some big things that we were looking for is a place that was safer, a place that was more cost effective, that our income would go farther, that we wouldn't have to work as hard and can spend more time together as a family and and just spending time together as a family, finding a lifestyle that would improve our family time. These were big factors for us. We have uh, had young children at the time that we became expats. Now we have teenagers, but we've been expatting to some degree or another since they were infants. And so at least my youngest was an infant. And so that's, that's always been important for us, right? Tax advantages is a big one for us. Not one that we necessarily completely chose around, but it's one that we certainly consider it's on the list. And that plays into income, right? Just your money goes farther, but they are two separate things, right? Which places give you tax advantages, which places have a lower cost of living. Often people are going to want to put those together, but not always. So be aware those are two separate things. You may be looking for a place like us. We wanted to be able to raise our children uh, in a, a different culture, so we didn't want to move to a place that had a near similar culture. We wanted them to be bilingual or trilingual, so we focused on a place that did not speak 
In case it's not obvious, English is our native language. We wanted to not grow up in an English-speaking country. They're always going to hear English at home. We wanted them to hear something else in, in the world and not just us teaching them a second language poorly, but to actually have firsthand contact with other language or languages so that they'd be encouraged to have that additional power in their life as uh, a greater ability to understand the world and interact with the world, things that we were lacking growing up ourselves. And of course, weather was a factor, not a major one for us. We actually moved to a country ultimately that its weather is not our favorite by any stretch whatsoever, but we do find it to be slightly better than where we came from. It has improved, right? So it was it was a step in the right direction. It was something to consider. And there's lots of ancillary things. And, and sometimes there's uh, uh, more than just uh, happy goals, but some necessary uh, requirements. And for us, some of those requirements or really strong factors, where we wanted to move to a place that now these are a little bit more like as filters, right? These are not reasons to leave, but they could be things that we used in, in deciding the process, right? We wanted to make sure that we were not so far from back home that we couldn't come back to visit family or family couldn't visit us. We wanted to be in similar time zones so that we weren't in a position of having to work or call in the middle of the night to be able to talk to someone and have them be awake. Uh, all these things, you want to start enumerating this, right? And of course, there's multiple lists that you may want to have, but look at your push and pull factors, things that are uh, making you want to leave, but certainly then things that are drawing you somewhere. Now, some people, right, in this are going to be only focused on the push fire. I got to get out. I'm, I'm worried about the state of things where I am, so I need to go somewhere else. And that alone, while it's completely adequate, is a kind of dangerous position to be in. So if that's you, if you are a push factor, if the reason when I ask you why do you want to become an expat and everything you focus on is your home country? If you're like, I don't like the cost of living, I don't like the safety, I don't like the politics, you name it. If that's what you focus on, then the exercise I want you to do with me is to sit down and start defining what good looks like. Don't, don't talk about, right, the place you're coming from, right? Write that down in your reasons, right? That's the first part. You've unloaded that mentally, put that on the list. Now, this is kind of like a life coaching moment right here. Now I want you to start making a list of what the world would look like to you, where it would be great, which things actually matter to you. And I want you to be really careful about this because a lot of people will get caught up in things that ultimately don't matter to them. For example, it is super common for people to mention political situations that they think are important to them. But once they actually move abroad, what they find out is that what they're concerned about is the results of political uh, situations, right? Maybe you say, well, I want this type of government. But once you actually move to a place, you realize, well, you're not a voter and it's not your government. You don't actually care. What you care is that you can do these different things in your life that matter to you. And, and how those things happen may not matter to you, right? You may be like, oh, I, I thought it was really important to have my government do X and Y. And I thought that only this type of government would do that. But this other type of government also does that. Oh, well, then I don't care about the type of government, right? Be careful that you're setting goals and you're thinking about the actual things you want, not, not proxies for them. So as part of this exercise, just work on that and ask yourself, when you write something down, is this the actual goal? Or is there a, a larger goal? So for example, you may say, oh, I want a place that lets me live tax-free. But what if there was a place that taxed you just a little bit, but the cost of living was significantly lower? Is your goal actually to avoid taxes? Or would you be happier having more spending power, even though you're paying a little bit of taxes? You, you get more but you have to put up with paying taxes. Would that be okay? Ah, if that's true, then not paying taxes isn't the goal. A low, lower total cost of living or a, a greater total buying power are the actual things that matter to you. So think in that term as much as possible, but, but really sit down and focus on this, what good looks like to you. Try to find your happy. We've already got the upset, let that go. Now picture your paradise for a lot of people including people like me, quite often that happy place is going to inv involve some waves from the ocean, perhaps. Maybe it's going to involve some 
outdoor barbecues, maybe some low cost of living, maybe some really good safety, the ability to walk on the streets and never have to worry about carrying a camera and having cash in your pockets. And, and it's just not stuff you have to worry about. Are those things important to you? They're important to an awful lot of people. Write them down. Try to define what your happy place is going to look like. Maybe you're just telling a story right now, but start dreaming up that that Pacific Island that works just perfectly for you. Maybe you're not going to be able to find a place that's exactly that, but you're going to start figuring out what it is you're actually looking for. Because the last thing you want to do, well, if you really are unhappy, the last thing you want to do is stay where you are. But the next to last thing that you want to do is simply move from one place you don't like to some place you still dislike, but just a little bit less, right? Let's not try to get you to just being a little bit less unhappy. Let's try to make you happy, right? Let's do this, people. We can be happy. And I'm not saying that just moving to a new country is going to magically make you happy. But for an awful lot of people, this massive life change and change of things that you normally have no control over, it's for most people the first time in their life that you actually get to make real decisions about major parts of your life. If you're you know, an American, as an example, because I am, there's millions of things that go on every day with laws and, and the way that uh, society runs and, and how we drive and all these things that I have no say over. They're not necessarily bad, but I didn't pick them and I have no input really on them. And that's not necessarily great. I mean, I may not have great input. That was a huge moth flying around my head. Uh, but assuming that I want to be able to uh, uh, have input as to these major components of my life, there's nothing I can do as an American. But when I decide to move abroad, when I start becoming an expat, the choice of where I'm going to move allows me to choose all kinds of components of my life that I could never choose before. And so this is an opportunity for you to really think more broadly about how to improve your life in amazing ways. And so one of the dangers here is that we're going to move on, right? So that's your, that's your homework for you push pressure people. You need to change your mindset. Yep. Establish. You're ready to go. Great. Now, where, how, when make your happy happen. Now, when we're talking about this, I had to move that bee moth thing was out of control. So for, for those of you who are already in a poll mode, you're perfectly happy with where you live now. You wouldn't be displeased if you had to stay there for the rest of your life, but you're sensing some places pulling you there. Maybe you've visited Ireland and it's just, wow, that could be your life. And why not make that happen? And that's a great place to be in. So you've already overcome or avoided completely the negative piece and you're just in a positive space. That's excellent. Let's work with that. But now I want to warn you guys, caution you guys who are already in that happy place that a lot of you are going to be experiencing that happy based on often travel or discovery of a new place. That bee is not going to leave me alone. So when you are, are in this happy place, you're being pulled to somewhere, then there's a little bit of danger in a different direction. So let's say you visited Ireland. You thought it was great, and it is. I've been there. I love it. There's this really big temptation. Well, I'm going to focus on getting to Ireland, and that's not necessarily bad, but I still want you to go through this exercise. List the things about Ireland that you think are important. Then set that aside. Now start defining your perfection. What is exactly the place that you would, if you were creating your own fantasyful place, um, and, and you know, be reasonable. Don't say, well, it will have you know, seas full of chocolate and be located on the moon, but uh, come up with real world possible things of what good would look like for you. What would the cost of living, what would the safety, what would the uh, uh, distance from things, just everything. Put down what you think is going to matter to you. Try this exercise. And then still look at what made you excited about Ireland in this case, and or maybe you visited a beach and you say, I got to live on a beach, but really step back. Is it really living on a beach, the thing that you want to do? Maybe you just want to live accessible to a beach. We've found that living on beaches is not a big deal for us, but we always thought it would be. But we found that living in the mountains near a beach really made us happy or living in a city near a beach really made us happy. But we often found ourselves enjoying the beach more when it was only a few days a week, not when it was our every moment day to day. Those are things that yes, maybe you'll struggle to define ahead of time. We're going to deal with that in other episodes, how to how to hone in on that over time. But as a starting point, you definitely want to take at least a few minutes, right? Spend 30 minutes on this and try to define some of these things because they will leap you forward and save you a lot of headache down the road. So do this exercise and try to figure out 
exactly what made you excited about being an expat and what things you would define as your what good looks like define your perfect place and then see how these line up. Is there an overlap? Is what you uh, discovered in some place really, really close to your to your def definition of good? Are they actually a bit different? And why? Is there something something that you didn't think of? Is there some factor? Or in a lot of cases, maybe there are other places that are going to suffice for you or be even better than the place you're in and you just didn't think to research them because you were focused on the place that you had discovered rather than your happy place. It is a really common problem for people to especially go on vacation or just watch a YouTube channel and discover a really amazing location and then become focused on that location. But that location may not be right for you. You haven't been there yet, presumably, or if you're on vacation. But when you're on vacation, you don't get a broad feeling of it. If you visited Ireland and really like it, you may not have also visited Scotland or Norway or Iceland. And maybe one of those would be better for you. And Ireland was just so nice that it never occurred to you that someplace nearby might have a lot of the same factors, but with slightly different tunings here and there, and might actually be better for you. And that's something you really want to consider. Now we're going to get into choosing a country and all that in future episodes. It's not something you have to do now. Right now, we're trying to build your mental picture of exactly what's motivating you to become who you're becoming so that you can make good decisions about it as you move forward. Because every piece that we do in the future is going to depend on really understanding what it is that is motivating you and what is going to make you happiest in the end. Because we need to satisfy your motivation. That's a, a need, right? But we want to do so in the best possible way. That's a want. So that we end up at as close to your goal as we possibly can. Because we don't want this to be just okay, I managed to become an expat. We don't want this to be, okay, I'm happy. We want you to end up at, this is the happiest that I can reasonably be fantastic, right? That's where we're trying to get. We have uh, a goal of absolute success. A lot of people in life don't focus on full success. They f focus on good enough. And we don't want to give up good enough just because we are uh, uh, struggling for perfection. But we don't want to give up perfection just because we jump to good enough. As we take you through this program, our goal is to move you from wondering if being an expat might be a tool for you, might be the right thing for you and your family and your life, all the way to being able to successfully move to one or more new countries, know exactly why you're doing it, be able to do so in a really comfortable way without fear and find success in your life to solve the things that you need to solve and maybe solve a bunch of things you didn't know you could solve and actually take you to that happy place or as close to it as we can reasonably get. We want to empower you to be wildly successful in this process. And as always, uh, I'm going to mention on this because there are so many people who are selling uh, services for relocation, so many people who are trying to make money out of relocation and, and uh, you know, to be fair, I do get compensated by YouTube for making videos, but I'm not asking you guys to pay for any products. I don't want you to pay for a seminar. I don't want you to pay for a checklist. I don't want you to pay for anything. I want you to watch some videos, hit like. If you're financially capable of doing so and you want to support the work we're doing, feel free. It's a donation. You can see, I'll put it up here, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. But if that's something that's going to be a hardship for you, don't do it. Do not feel obligated to do that. That is purely a donation. If it's something you can do and you appreciate the channel, I certainly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. But we want to make these tools absolutely free, absolutely open to everyone. It's not leading to something we're going to sell you. That is not going to happen. I do not have a service to tie to this. Uh, it is, it is, we want you to have this. And I think everyone should have this. These are really important bits of information that too many people hide behind paywalls. That is, that is not where we're going. This isn't a beginning of a sales pitch for anything. And if it seems like that, let me know, but start with your questions about relocation in general. There's going to be a series. We're going to have a playlist specifically for this. Get down there in those comments, scroll down, and you can ask your questions there. You can send in video questions, and you could actually be on the show. Uh, subscribe to this channel. 
We cover a lot of relocation, not just in this playlist, but throughout the channel. We also cover some specific locations, but that's not what this playlist is about. This playlist is going to be completely neutral to just build expat tools and expectations and help provide comfort. We do live streams and a number of things uh, to provide you guys opportunity for uh, Q&A and just getting the information that you need, because there's a lot of information, a lot of questions that people have. And they're just not available in the right places. So we're, we're trying to tackle that. So thanks for joining us here. Do all the things. I will see all of you tomorrow.